So let's talk about preeclampsia. Even Professor Redmond didn't invent preeclampsia. Um, it is something that's been known about for many, many years. This lady um, lived in the 17th and 18th century. She was a Dutch lady who was widowed after having five children. She practiced as a midwife for 52 years until she was 90 years old. I don't know if that appeals to any of you guys. <laughs> um, she um, was very good at record keeping. She'd have done very well in today's environment. Um, she recorded um, over 3,000 cases, including 20 maternal deaths. And she describes her experience of dealing with women in labor, shaking, fitting in labor. Um, her birth statistics, somebody has worked out her um, corrected maternal and perinatal mortality. Her birth statistics were superior to those of physician attended hospitals in the States up until 1945. She had a 95% non-intervention rate. What <coughs> you need in life is a very good midwife. So, what is preeclampsia? What do we know? Well, we know it is a multi-system disorder of unknown cause, unique to human pregnancy. It's characterized by an abnormal vascular response to placentation. What's supposed to happen? Baby implants, placenta grows into the uterus, and it's supposed to bury into them to the maternal side so that it makes it very, very easy for blood to come from the mother across the placenta and into baby. And for reasons that we really don't understand, in preeclampsia, that just doesn't happen as well as we might expect. It makes it more difficult for blood to go from the mother into the baby, okay? So it's, you know, it's more difficult. We know, we know this because we can look at the uterine arteries, which is downstream from here, maternal blood vessels. We know that the placenta isn't working. We can do umbilical artery doppers here, okay? We know that this condition, the situation, <coughs> is associated with inc an increase in systemic vascular resistance. Platelets are activated. They aggregate, they activate. If you look at the mean platelet volume, it goes up. The coagulation system gets activated. Endothelial, so there is endothelial cell dysfunction. Nitric oxide, free radicals, all sorts of factors. Nobody really knows if it's cause or effect. Lots of people doing lots of research at the moment. This abnormal placentation gives you a on the maternal side, a maternal syndrome. We pick that up with high blood pressure, with protein in the urine. On the fetal side, it can upset the baby, giving you intrauterine fetal growth restriction, abnormal oxygenation of that baby. It's a disease of theories. I had a little look on PubMed. If you go into, you're familiar with PubMed, if you put the word preeclampsia into PubMed, um, 30 years ago, back in 1974, there were 17 publications on preeclampsia. So you can read 17 papers and be an absolute authority on preeclampsia. Last year, there were nearly 600 papers on preeclampsia. We still don't really know what causes it. It makes it very difficult to treat and certainly makes it very difficult to find a cure. Anyway, I'm really here to talk about preeclampsia from a clinical point of view. This placenta, there's no doubt that this placenta is the culprit, okay? You don't need a fetus to have preeclampsia. You just need a placenta. We know that from molar pregnancies, where the placenta overgrows no baby, you can get bad preeclampsia from that, okay? The only known cure that we have for preeclampsia is delivery of that placenta, and usually the baby as well. Okay, so we talk about a maternal syndrome, and a fetal syndrome. Let's look at the maternal syndrome first. One of the problems, if you like, with preeclampsia is it exists as a, as a spectrum, okay, ranging from, from normal pregnancy here at the top, okay, through all of these down to real crisis at the bottom, okay. So PIH, pregnancy-induced hypertension, it's not preeclampsia, it's a lot more benign than preeclampsia, but not as benign as normal pregnancy. 
there's a range, there's a spectrum within preeclampsia. It's obvious, you know, you get women who've got blood pressure of 140 over 95 and a plus of protein at 39 weeks. It's not the same as a lady that comes to you with blood pressure of 180 over 120 and four pluses of protein at 27 weeks. Okay. Um, I think that's partly why it's so difficult to give informa you know, accurate information. What do I mean by crisis, maternal crisis? This is from a review um, that came out in The Lancet back in, in February. These are American figures. Um, but mothers have crisis when they have one of these things, abruption, disseminated intravascular coagulation, HELP syndrome, we'll come on to, pulmonary edema, renal failure, eclampsia, and others. Confidential inquiry into maternal deaths, now called CMAC, of course, um, came out for the, the latest one for 2000 to 2002, just came out last November, December time. Okay, there were 14 deaths from preeclampsia and eclampsia, nine from intracranial hemorrhage, one from adult respiratory distress syndrome, two from what was described as multi organ failures, including adult respiratory distress syndrome, and two from DIC. Age range 17 to 38. Parity ranged from 0 to 6. Seven were primates. There were four antenatal and two postnatal eclamptic fits, and HELP syndrome occurred in eight women. Six of 13 cases assessed showed clear features of substandard care and may have been avoidable deaths. Avoidable deaths, avoidable maternal deaths. You know, a mother in her prime, a father, a child, a widower, an orphan. These are terrible things to happen. Intracranial hemorrhage as the single largest cause of death indicates a failure of effective antihypertensive therapy this must be the priority for improved clinical care. Are, are you all familiar with the confidential inquiry? Have people read it? It's, yeah, it's, it, is, it's, it's, it can make sad reading, but it makes very interest, very interesting reading. The vignettes, the little stories there, um, you know, they are extremely interesting. Um, don't read them on call is the only thing I would say. It's a bit like watching Crime Watch on your own at night. You know? <laughs> <laughs> someone was sitting watching television and someone came in and shot them. Yeah. 